Good day, everyone. Welcome to Galactic Geographic, brought to you by SSNN. I am Liam Farrell, your guide for today, and on this day, we'll be looking at the fascinating ecosystem of Fermi 3 and all the flora and fauna that make up this little slice of the settled systems. I'll go over all the relative planetary data before we descend to the surface to give it a proper up-close and personal Galactic Geographic view. Before we begin, yes, SSNN has changed the name of this program from Intergalactic Geographic to simply Galactic Geographic. So now join me on this scenic adventure and let's hop into this. Now friends, as I said, let's take a look at this planet from the safety and comfort of our ship in orbit. Fermi 3 is a habitable world in the Fermi system located in the more sparsely populated galactic eastern region of the settled systems. While it has an average magnetosphere, the gravity on the planet is on the lower side when compared to Earth, sitting at just 66% of Earth's gravity. This will make it a little easier to navigate, but it is best to remain active while on this planet to avoid muscle atrophy. Interestingly enough, the rotation of the planet is roughly the same speed of Earth, making the days here last for 26 hours. If you're looking for it, it's due almost directly to the galactic east of the Ixel system and to the galactic northeast of the MAL system. Looking at the planet itself, Fermi 3 is host to a number of resources that aspiring list settlers and corporations alike may be interested in. The planet boasts deposits of argon, iron, uranium, water, alkalines, benzene, iridium, and vanadium. A number of these are rarer galactic resources. The planet also features two unique traits, ecological consortium and primordial networks. Gravitational anomalies have also been spotted on the surface in various areas. The Ecological Consortium refers to the large clusters of dense roots, fibers, and other biotic structures that merge into a nutrient-rich storage cluster that sits in large craters. These craters have small plant fibers blowing about in the winds of the planet that help to proliferate plant life in the harsher environments of Fermi 3, not only through gathering nutrients together to spur plant growth, but also by sitting in low spots to collect and hold the precious few drops of water that may fall in the sandy deserts. Primordial networks refer to the exposed root systems across the planet where fungus forms a symbiotic relationship with the roots of local plants, otherwise known as mycorrhizal lattices. These are just one of the plant masses growing from organic waste from which the local vegetation is derived. The symbiotic relationship between the plants and fungus form a nodule in the root network, these pods that are visible on the surface. This symbiosis helps to spread both the plant life and fungal spores across the landscape. In regards to biomes, there are five of them spread across the planet. Most of the planet, 51% of it, is covered in oceans, which is slightly less than we're in the old Earth days. Of the remaining 49% of the planet, roughly 19% of it is frozen mountains, 10% of it is mountains, 10% of it is sandy desert, and the last 10% is deciduous forests. Despite the majority of the planet being covered in water, most of the habitable land on the planet ranges from arid to semi-arid, with the forest being the most temperate. I'll be breaking down the types of flora and fauna that can be found in each biome in just a minute. But before that, please take a moment for a word from our sponsor. Hey there, spacefarers! You find yourself falling asleep in the long haul through the space lanes? Do you constantly feel worn out by the differences in local time on planets? Whether you're hauling cargo to New Atlantis or just going to visit Grandma in Aquila City, you need an energy drink that will keep you alert without the crash and with great flavor. Allow me to introduce you to Dubby Energy. Dubby offers a variety of flavors for all the discerning palates out there. From powders to shakers, from pre-made cans to t-shirts, there is plenty on offer from Dubby.gg. If you're cautious about trying something new in the energy drink arena, fear not, because for a limited time, use code DOODLEFAN at checkout to receive a massive 20% off your entire order. Order Dubby Energy today! Welcome back, everyone. Now let's move on to the life forms that exist on the surface of Fermi 3. In terms of notable flora, there's a total of six different plant species spread across the five biomes of the planet. The crag root is a tall, pinkish-brown root that grows out of the ground of the forests and mountains of Fermi 3. Despite being mostly a large root, they are capable of producing seeds that can be used as a spice. Next, we have the spiral creeper. Unlike the crude, thick, outward appearance of the crag root, the spiral creeper, while notably denser and wider than the root, has a lighter, airier appearance to its green branches and lavender-colored leaves. Atop the branches sit several green, spiral-shaped flowers. Given the variety of pleasant colors this plant possesses, it is no surprise that its flowers are used as a cosmetic additive by corporations. The spirit laurel is a small, coniferous plant that grows in the forests, sandy deserts, and mountains of Fermi 3. Being coniferous, it appears to maintain its small prickly leaves year-round and in any environment, although they are easiest to find when searching the sandy deserts, as their green color stands out amongst the tan and the gray. The bunches of leaves at the center of the plant can be harvested to provide fiber for crafting projects. Next, let's take a look at the stunted pine. 
Despite what the name would suggest, the stunted pine lacks some of the visual similarities to its coniferous namesake. It has a mix of yellow and brown leaves on its rather short but full-figured frame. These colorings also help it blend in rather handily with the other, lesser flora around it. More akin to a bush than a tree, the stunted pine does however produce cones at the top of its short branches. These pine cones, if you will, are filled with a rather nutritious sap, likely to give the seeds enough nutrients to germinate in the sandy deserts, cool mountains, or deciduous forests of Fermi III. The sweet fumewort is a plant that upon first inspection does not appear to be in fact a plant. Instead, it almost seems to be a fleshy xeno egg of sorts. It has rough, ribbed skin that goes from dark purple to a lighter green as it grows upwards. Once it reaches full maturity after growing taller than a human male, a rather large seed pod will grow atop the fumewort. This pod is rather hardy and rough in order for the seeds inside to be safely transplanted in the soils of the sandy deserts and mountains of Fermi III. Given the toughness of the pod and the harsher environments the plant exists in, the pods have roots growing out of them that can be used as a supplementary structural material should it be needed. The final plant of note on Fermi III is the Wanderer's Husk. Found in the deserts and mountains, the Wanderer's Husk has an appearance similar to that of the yucca plants of Old Earth. Having thick wooden stalks with long, thin, coarse leaves, the Wanderer's Husk also produces seed pods at the tops of its stalks once the leaves have dried and the plant has gone dormant. In a strangely disturbing fashion, the seed pods have the appearance of an upside-down human skull. While the plant will continue to live on during its hibernation, this is the ideal time for the seed pods to detach and be transplanted elsewhere, making it easy pickings for any passing explorer. The fluids of these seed pods are rather viscous, leading them to be useful as a sealant supplement. Regarding the fauna of Fermi III, there are eight different species of animals roaming the surface, ranging in both size and temperament. Let's start with the herding clawback scavenger. Being a large, omnivorous crustacean with eight legs, the herding clawback scavenger roams the sandy deserts and mountains of Fermi III. Being a large creature, larger than a human male at least, the clawback will mostly hunt the much smaller finger-faced geophage that shares its environment. However, if it comes across the abandoned carcass of a larger animal, it will choose to scavenge the easy meal to continue surviving. Its size, however, does not always save it from being preyed upon by the swarming cockroaches that dot the landscape. The bones of the clawback scavenger are rather robust in order to support its immense size. As such, they can be used as a supplementary structural material. After just being mentioned, the swarming cockroach is a true nightmare to behold. Standing as tall as a man and just as long, this naturally occurring abomination skitters about in deserts and mountain habitats on six strong legs. Usually hunting in packs, the swarming cockroaches of Fermi III appear to have no mouth to continue its carnivorous lifestyle. However, when it attacks with its claws and the sharp appendages that protrude from its face, the carapace of this creature is coated with a fluid that acts as a metabolic agent to break down its prey over time. Encountering these creatures can be a harrowing and fatal confrontation for any explorer who is not properly equipped. Seeing as most of the planet is ocean, there can be a strong case for the schooling Kronosaurus scavenger to be the most abundant form of life on Fermi III. However, since we lack the technology to completely map the oceans of the planet nor to fully explore them, SSNN would like to state that this is strictly conjecture at the moment. The Kronosaurus is the only major form of fauna found in the oceans of Fermi III and very strongly resembles the extinct whale shark of Old Earth. Having a long body with flippers where arms and legs would otherwise be, the Kronosaurus also features a large jaw filled with sharp teeth, a mandible of death for anything it can catch. Its six forward-facing eyes also indicate that it is a predator in the freezing oceanic environment. Oddly enough, the bone marrow of the Kronosaurus is known to be highly toxic, so take care when handling the carcasses of these massive beasts. While the cockroaches hunt the desert sands and the rocky mountains, the hunting exo-runner keeps the prey population of the forests in check. Being a large quadrupedal carnivore, not too dissimilar from wolves of old earth, the hunting exo-runner trades in the fur of a wolf for a hard layer of scales and a long snout for a tooth-lined beak. While some are as large as the extinct wolves, some can grow extraordinarily large, being taller than a human male even in a quadrupedal stance. Spikes run up the length of its back and down its tail that can both serve as a defensive weapon and for protection from would-be attackers while sleeping. Given the Exo Runner is the apex predator of its environment, there can be only speculation as to what predator of the past caused need for these adaptations. The soft tissue beneath the scales can be harvested and used as a hypercatalyst. 
The finger-faced geophage is unique amongst the fauna of Fermi 3 in that it is the lone inhabitant of the frozen mountains that make up almost a fifth of the planet's habitable surface. While it does also live in the deserts and mountains, it has no natural predators in the frozen mountains where the creature's population thrives despite the conditions. Being the first geophage discussed on this program, allow your host to elaborate on that word. A geophage is a creature that practices eating soil, clay, or other earth-like substances, doing so perhaps not strictly for sustenance, but for supplementary nutrition of their diet, which lacks necessary minerals. The finger-faced geophage derives its namesake from the head that protrudes from its short, fat, slug-like body. It appears to have three fingers, if you will, that make up the creature's head as it slides across its habitats. The vital fluids of the creature, much like the sap from the wanderer's husk, can be rather thick and used as a viable sealant. The next creature to discuss is the shard hopper herbivore. A large insect akin to grasshoppers of old earth, the shard hopper herbivore is also non-aggressive towards humans. In fact, the only creature they seem to be actively hostile towards are the exorunners that inhabit their shared deciduous forest habitat. The shard hopper earns its namesake by having the two rear legs be nearly three times the size of their other four, allowing them to leap great distances forward to both attack and escape. They have a hard, spiky exoskeleton that serves as the creature's only line of defense against attacks. Striking this exoskeleton with any handheld weapon will cause pain to the attacker, something that does little to deter their predation by the exorunners. A variety of colors have been noted amongst the native shardhopper population, but it is currently unknown to Galactic Geographic whether or not this is caused by age, genetics, or sexual dimorphism. The hide that exists beneath the scales of the shardhopper are rich in amino acids. While the space roach scavenger may look unpleasant and dangerous, this large arthropod is peaceful and will not attack unprovoked or otherwise. Being omnivorous and with its namesake, the space roach scavenger will eat meat only if presented to it in the form of a carcass found in the forest habitat. Otherwise, the space roach is almost exclusively herbivorous. Possessing a layered exoskeleton like other arthropods, the space roach skitters around on eight short legs. It possesses a set of antennae for sensing food that it can then grasp with its two front mantis-like appendages. Along the back of the space roach are a series of sickly green glands. These glands present the only form of defense for the space roach as they are highly toxic, truly only a defense against the exorunners that would target them for food. The last creature we'll discuss on Fermi 3 is one that sounds both mythic in nature, but is also very real and much less dangerous than its namesake, and that is the Vampire Geophage. Flying high above the forest and sandy deserts of Fermi 3, the Vampire Geophage is a small winged mammal, very much like the common fruit bats of old Earth. However, unlike their extinct cousins, these vampires do not hunt any prey, often fly either alone or with one other of their species, and are active at all times of the day. Trying to view one up close is almost impossible unless one is found deceased on the ground, as they rarely have a need to land due to Fermi 3's weaker than average gravity. If one is found, the hind of their wings can be used as a membrane of sorts while crafting. And thus concludes this episode of Galactic Geographic. Today we explored Fermi 3, from its flora and fauna to the conditions of the planet itself. I am glad to have been able to host this episode for you and everyone on the Galactic Geographic team hopes to see you again. If you've learned anything today, please let us know in the comments below. If you'd like, feel free to subscribe via SSNN to catch all the latest episodes as we explore the settled systems together. So that is all today, explorers. I hope your adventures bring you joy and stay safe out there in the space lanes. I've been your host, Liam Farrell, and until next time, gentle viewer, we will see you again, sometime, somewhere, amongst the stars.